Please rise. Let us begin on November 15, 2020, Lord's Day service with silent prayer. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and stayed on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our responsive reading will be number 42. Matthew chapter 5 Responsive reading number 42, Matthew chapter 5. Let's read this responsively. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us all pray. Dear loving Father God, in this year of 2020, on this November 15th, Lord, in this year there's only about a month and a half left. And on this day, we are here before you in worship, once again gathered as sanctuaries as our, with our families. You have preserved our hearts and our, and our minds and have led us here and we thank you. As we reflect on the past time, there's a lot of things that have been blocked and stopped and changed because of the pandemic. And there is all of our plans and our schedules that have all failed or got ruined because of this. And at this time, we confess that surely, no matter what we set, no matter what we do in our lives, how well we plan, nothing will ever go according to our plans. Help us to never uh, fold away your plan, your redemptive will. And may we go uh, shining the light of life preaching your word to countless souls. We thank you for this grace and this opportunity to live like this. No matter what may happen in this world, in our society, may our hearts never shake. And Father God, help us to remember the first love that we had when we first fell in love with you. May we not shake or waver, nor uh, be in despair, but mightily march forward towards heaven. Help us to live the remainder of our time like this. We want to pray for our nation and our peoples. 
you have established our nation of America as your nation of believers. And especially after the election period, there's a lot of uh, dispute, unrest, a lot of uh, these uh, things that are occurring between people. Now, in the middle of all of these things, may the hearts of your saints lift up their prayers to you, and may you listen intently, and may you grant us peace and security. Father God, to all the leaders and the president, may they all be those who fear you, to be those who are able to lead your nation, entrusting it up to you. Help us to start our new year in this way. To all of our uh, Christian, uh, may you may we be able to recover our lost faith, Christianity, our nation, and may we be reborn as your nation of your gospel of your cross. May there be a work of this proclamation of your word. We also want to pray for the nation of Korea, Father God. This nation has been called as your nation of believers, as a nation of missionaries. May you grant, this is a nation that's been granted great faith. So may our nation, as we pre proclaim your word, your gospel, and wherever the crosses are, the churches are, may there be this type of work of victory. We want to pray for our church. Lord, this church has been entrusted with your work of uh, with your word of the cross, the gospel of redemption. Help us never forget this mission. And surely, to all the souls that are dying, to all the souls that are hurt, help us that we will be able to go to all the souls who are being oppressed by Satan, those who are uh, being restrained. Help us to find, uh, grant them liberty and peace as we be, are the church of power of your cross, the church that is like Mount Zion, proclaiming this word to these souls. Father God, our church, from the head pastor to the elder eldresses to the youngest child, may we be like this one barley bread, closely knit as one unit, and to all the authorities of darkness, all the enemies, may, th may we be that stand before us, may we be able to overcome these things. May we be able to be the church of your uh, mission, the church that takes on the mission, the task of harvest, to, uh, to harvest, to gather all these souls as first fruits that we can offer to you. Lord, may you come and draw near to every saint, to all the people who have pray to you consistently that have still not yet found answers, solutions, resolve to the problems of their prayers. Do the sincere prayers that we lift up. May you mightily work within us. And before this year is over, may the problems of our lives, families, children, business, schools, uh, between other people, whatever it may be, Father God, may you resolve them in one, mo in one moment, in one movement, May you bring about a new work so that we can walk with strength, holding on tightly to your cross. May we be these types of families of faith. Father God, to all these hands that have, are, that have been helping for the creation, uh, for this video worship, may you remember their efforts, their devotions. May you allow their bodies to become stronger. May you grant them this type of strength. And may, we, uh, may you hold on to us so that no problems will come before us that, that, will, that will help us to progress in this, uh, more, to devote more for you. Father God, May there be a bright, mighty shining of your light through the Holy Spirit for this worship. May your word not be dropped at all uh, by any of our hearts. May we plant it and bear many fruits of faith to you. We dedicate this time of worship to you. We pray this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our bread of life can be found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. Oh, we read it. Now when the unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. 
Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they come in and live there. And the last condition of that person becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. This is the word of God. Amen. The title of today's message is The Principle of Emptying and Filling. And with this, I hope that all of us will receive much grace on this Lord's Day, November 15th, 2020. Now, in our scripture reading, we see that of the various uh, multiple uh, sermons that Jesus gave during his public ministry, this is talking about one of them, one of these parables, that from this one person, there, were, there was this uh, evil spirit, this dirty spirit that uh, left. And then once it left, there that, that uh, evil spirit came and brought seven more and completely ruins this person's life. But here, what was the conclusion of this parable? In our scripture reading, it's at the very end. It says that that is the way it will also be with this evil generation. So today, we're going to look at this. It says that this work will happen during this evil generation. In our scripture reading, if we are able to simply analyze it and summarize it, it'll be like this. It says that an evil spirit left and it went to a waterless place. It avoids places of water. In other words, it hates this water. Then, what is this water? That is the Holy Spirit of God. That is the place of the work of God. It is the water of the Holy Spirit. The water of the Word of God that works. The places where this works, that's a place of water. And this evil spirit, this unclean spirit, moved to avoid it. Now this is talking about a holy water. This is water is above the expense. In John chapter 7, verse 38 uh, to 39, it says, The one who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow wa uh, rivers of living water. But this he said in re reference to the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. So what is a spirit? Right. That is a spiritual water. Right? Rivers of living water. These waters that the unclean spirit dislikes. Ephesians 5.26 So that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Now, the living word of God is clean water. Right? Water that cleanses. Now, this unclean spirit does not like this water. Because when they come across this, it is the end for them. <clears throat> now, in look, if we look at verse 44, when it continues, it says, And then when it comes right into the house, and it, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Now this unclean spirit is left from this person's heart. And this heart is being portrayed as a house. But when it left, and when it came back, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. The word unoccupied in Greek, it's skolozo. Skolozo. It means it's empty, but it, it's in the present tense. In other words, right now, in this person's heart, is in a state that's empty. And it also says, if you read it, it was swept. In Greek, that's sorrow, sorrow. And that means to be swept, right? To be cleaned. And it's in the perfect tense of a verb, meaning that once this unclean spirit was sent away, the house of this person's heart has been cleaned, right? It's done. It's in the perfect tense. 
It also says uh, that it is uh, put in order. And in Greek, that's cosmeo. Means put in order. To put, like, to set it. Right? To put it in uh, its place. And this is also the verb's perfect tense. Meaning that once this unclean spirit was sent away with the Greek word cosmeo, this person's heart, their room, it's all set, kind of like decorated. It's all done. <laughs> how amazing is this? The once this unclean spirit left, imagine how dirty this person's heart must have been. But it was sent out, and it was cleaned, and it was set in order like this. <laughs> Just like us. Before we go into a new pers a new home, we want to uh, kind of do some renovations, like uh, putting wooden floors. We want to start new like this. But what's important is, once this unclean spirit left, it brought back seven uh, more spirits, more unclean than itself, more evil than itself, and it came and conquered this person's heart. And very clearly, we just read that it was cleansed, cleaned, put in order. In other words, this is a heart that's made the new determination to live a new life, to start anew. But why did this happen? It's not even just one more uh, unclean spirit, but seven more, more wicked than itself. So we can, we can see that there, this person's situation is even more worse than before, far worse. So what kind of problem was uh, with this person? What kind of pers uh, problem did this person have that this would happen to them? Where this unclean spirit brought seven more, more wicked than itself. The Bible shows us that in these end times, especially in these wicked, in this evil generation, this work, this parable will happen. Initially, there's one thing that we can really see. So in this person, why, why did it get worse? If you read our scripture reading, it says that this unclean spirit, what kind of characteristic did it have? This unclean spirit went and avoided this uh, places of water. and went on the waterless area. So if there's water there, this unclean spirit would not go. But in this house... In this person's heart, this unclean spirit went back in the house that's been cleaned and put in order. What does that mean? It means that the inside this person's heart was no water. The water of the Word, the water of the Holy Spirit. It was clean and holy. Right? This water that's clean and holy, the water that's above the expanse, was not present there in this person's heart. Therefore, the unclean spirit was able to go back, ultimately. After the unclean spirit was sent out, what was the biggest issue uh, that this person had once they were freed of the unclean spirit? In our scripture reading, verse 44, the Greek word skolozo, that was the issue. That is, in this person's heart, they were unable to Fill their heart. In other words, it was a an empty heart. This unclean spirit that was sent out. Their heart, though it was cleaned and put in order in the perfect tense, it was done. But in the present tense, it was in an empty state. That was this person's biggest problem. Satan loves what kind of place the most? They love the place that's uh, emptied, where there's nothing there, where no one can uh, prove to be an obstacle. Here in this open space, 
this, uh, Satan can do anything he wants. Therefore, this unclean spirit went around looking for a place to rest and found this empty place and went back in. But this person, after they, this person was freed of this unclean spirit, look at, look at what happened. See, when we see their, that person's heart, that person's home, it was cleaned. It was organized. But this uh, spirit cannot just go back by itself. Came back with seven more spirits, more evil than itself, and went and you know broke open those doors and conquered this place. How sad and how uh, you know unfortunate is this situation. But this type of work happens during these end times. Here, we can see that there are two different principles of faith. What is the first? It is the principle of empty. To be emptied or to cast out the evil, the unclean and the wicked. And the other principle of faith is the principle of filling. That once now that you are emptied, you fill it with the things that are holy. This principle of emptying and filling must work together. So, this type of uh, uh, you know, wretched thing that occurred in our scripture reading will not happen to us. Of the twelve disciples of Jesus, who was the number one disciple? Right, the, the number one student. That was Peter. Looking at the life of Peter, we see in our scripture reading as a lesson, the principle of emptying and filling. And this is something that we can really clearly see. If so, what is that principle of emptying and filling that we can learn today? Number one, Peter was a person who practiced the principle of emptying very well. See, he was very successful in the principle of empty, emptying. Small number one. Peter, <clears throat> Peter put forth Jesus' words before his own and obeyed. That's, that's uh, the very first uh, attitude, the image of Peter that we see when he first met Jesus. When he was first called as a disciple, Peter in Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 5, we can see how he obeyed. It says, Now when Jesus, Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon responded and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. This is when they first met. Now this young man, Jesus, you know, was seen by Peter and it was like, you know, he, you know, it's not like a veteran. Peter was a veteran. He was by trade a fisherman. But all night he worked and caught nothing. But now we, he sees this young man approaching him, tells him, hey, go to the deep end and throw down your net on this side. At the time, what do you think Peter was thinking? He, he has so much experience. You know, he even knows what time, where you need to go, how you need to catch. All by experience, you know, he's lived his life like this and he would have known. But according to Jesus' commands, you know, go to this place, this deep end, and let down your nets. All of his expertise and uh, experience Peter just let it all go. And he said amen to Jesus' commands. And he obeyed. This is the very first uh, encounter Peter had with Jesus. Small number two. Peter. Peter. 
Peter emptied his physical or his fleshly or his life's plans for Jesus. Luke 5, verse 10 to 11, it says, And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. It's not these momentary things that Simon did that he let go. You know, be my disciple. Imagine all of your life's plans, your career, your family. You threw it all away. And he did to follow Jesus. This is a great emptying shown by Peter. Small number three. Peter. Peter was able to empty his heart of hate and sought uh, forgiveness or the, these things regarding forgiveness from Jesus. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, it says, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how many times shall, I, shall my brother sin against me and I still forgive him? Up to seven times? Looking at Peter's question, what can we uh, receive? That if my brother sins against me, how many times can I forgive him? What's the best amount? Once? Twice? You know, I will even forgive up to three times. But what is Peter asking? He says, in his question, up to seven times? In other words, Peter, if my brother sins against me, should I even forgive him up to seven times? Just from here, we can, re we can see that Peter was willing to forgive up to seven times. This heart of hate, if I don't empty it, how can I forgive them seven times for the same thing? For us, can we even fathom forgiving someone seven times for the same thing? This heart of hate, we have to empty it. And we must look at Peter, the one who sought this thing regarding forgiveness from Jesus. In this year of 2020, we are here in this season of evaluation, of settling our accounts. And when we look back on our year, for you and I, we have to look the will of the Father, the mission of the Father. How much did we empty ourselves for these things? Inside of myself, the thoughts of the world, the greed of the world, my pride, my delights, all these things must be if we are filled with these things and unable to have ourselves empty uh, you know ourselves of these things then God can never come into our lives and work in us therefore on this holy Lord's day for you and I in this place all the things that we have filled ourselves with, the things that are apart from God's will, the sins, the greeds of the world, may we be those who are able to empty it. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord that we may have this time of grace. When we look at this emptying, Apostle Paul confessed. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. If you read it, it says, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them mere rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. Apostle Paul is also saying that he knows this, that for all this time, 
I possessed so many things. I filled my life, my heart, with so many things, but now I count them as mere rubbish and I've discarded them. <laughs> then these things, for him, in his life, what were these things that he valued originally? In our life today, these are things that are very, extremely hard to get rid of. If you look in the Bible, what, the, uh, what, what does it say about Paul? He was someone who uh, received circumcision on the eighth day. In other words, Apostle Paul. From the moment that he was born, he was someone who uh, even kept God's commandments, the circumcision. Apostle Paul, he was someone who was of the tribe of Benjamin. That's from the tribe of the first king of Israel, Saul. In other words, he was from the kingly line. He was in the same uh, tribe, the same affiliation of the very first king of Israel. The Bible also says that he was a Hebrews of Hebrew. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was someone who was born in the Jewish lineage. And it's not even just that, but he was like above all of them. One who is not mixed with other Gentile blood. He's also a Pharisee of the law. He was someone in terms of knowledge of the law. He was someone with the level of a Pharisee. He knew the law much more than anyone else. Also, from the moment that he was born, he was a Roman citizen. At the time, Jews, they were under Roman rule. If you were a Jew, see, looking at all of them, Paul was from birth a Roman citizen. That's even that's above all the Jews now. So he was someone with this type of authority. The Bible also talks about Paul, uh, 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 Paul in this way, that he was he was a student of Gamaliel. Uh, he that was a like the best rabbi, the best teacher, Gamaliel. He was someone who was taught under him. And today, that's like the best education you can get. The best house, family, the best status, honor. Paul lived possessing all this. But what does Paul say in the end? Paul says, that the moment that I met Jesus, I now see and count them as mere rubbish. Can you say that? Can I say that? That this is something that I worked so hard to achieve my educational status, my career, that I worked so hard like this, my, my status, my prestige, all this, I worked so much for this, my, my uh, power, my, my, my status. Just because I've met Jesus, you want me to now throw that away? Paul did. Beloved saints. In this world, who can, what kind of person of, you know, sound mind can throw it all away? What kind of person, uh, you know, exists like this? What's rubbish? Rubbish is something that, like, that rots or something. It's smelly. You throw it away. It, it, it's worthless. Just like Apostle Paul. We need to look at the things that the world values. And when we can look at them and view them as rubbish, then we can very boldly and very easily throw them away. <laughs> when we can boldly throw this away, what else do we attain? We are able to attain the one who is Lord over all, the Creator God, the one who is sovereign over all things. Jesus Christ is what we can attain. 
That is what it's stated by Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. That's what it tells us. Isn't that the best thing that we can attain? You know, we hold on to these little things that we value just to get a little bit more, a little bit more at a time. But Apostle Paul is saying, throw these little things away, then you gain everything else. Christ. Isn't that much better? Much more worth it? So, beloved saints, before this year is over, may we be those who are able to count the things that we originally valued as rubbish. The, the greed of the world, the, the, the delights, the temptations, all the valuable things of the world. May we all be those who boldly throw these away and be those who are able to truly empty ourselves. I bless us upon you in the name of the Lord. Now, big number two. On the other hand, Peter was someone who was not good in the principle of filling. He was weak in that area. Small number one. Peter. Peter, after emptying, was someone who was able to give an upright confession of faith. If I empty myself, you can give an upright statement, a confession of faith. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, it tells us, Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. At the time, there were a lot of teachers, a lot of people looking at Jesus. And they were all, they, they all had different interpretations of who Jesus might be. Saying, oh, he's a prophet, or he's Elijah. Or he's a nobody. So Jesus went to his disciples and said, Hey, what do you guys think I am? And all of a sudden, Peter said, Lord, you are Christ, the Messiah, Son of the living God. And he gave the correct answer. How could he? All of a sudden, how, how was this possible for him to create or uh, say this amazing confession of faith? There is no other reason than this, that Peter, more so than the other disciples, he was someone who was able to very cleanly uh, empty himself. That's why it was possible. Remember before what we just said? Before Jesus' words, Peter emptied himself of everything. And because of this amazing attitude and this kind of heart, he was really able to give this amazing confession of faith. <laughs> Small number two. However, Peter, after this confession of faith, was someone who was not giving this confession through true filling or a complete filling. If you look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, it says, And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barhona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Peter too must have been very shocked after this confession. Even he must have been very shocked to have said something like this. And he could have, for an instant, for a moment, Kind of uh, be proud, saying, wow, that came from me, huh? But Jesus is addressing what Peter did and how he did it. This amazing confession that you gave was not something that came from inside of you. A confession from you through your true feeling. But this confession was something that was planted in you in that moment by the Father God. In other words, inside of Peter, all the filling and the faith that Peter could have filled himself with, with true conviction of Jesus being Lord, that confession did not stem or originate out of there. Peter doesn't know a thing. But in that moment, he 
was uh, uh, he he had this confession planted in his heart by the Father God. That's how he was able to give this kind of confession. Small number three. After this, Jesus came. Jesus said to Peter, a prophecy regarding Peter's uh, future being filled. Peter, you're not filled right now. You are unable to do it. But in the future, you will be mightily used being filled with the holy things. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. It's a continuation and it says, And also, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Peter, rock, this is where that name comes from. That the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Peter, right now, he is someone who is not uh, he's not in a state where he can overpower it. No, Peter, right now you're not ready. But this is something that I'm talking about of the future. That I'm going to prophesy that in the future you will be ready. Right now, your state currently is empty. But there will be a time in the future where inside of you, in that empty state, you will be filled with the holy things, with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the waters of the, uh, above the expanse, you will have countless churches built on that foundation, upon you, where the gates of Hades cannot overpower it. Saints, countless churches, will be able to confess the same thing that you said, that you are Christ, Son of the living God, they will be able to confess this from their lips. And Jesus was prophesying this. Small number four. In the end, Peter. Peter. Peter was someone who accepted the mission of filling himself perfectly or fully. So Peter, remember before... He was someone who was good at uh, emptying, but now there was given an opportunity for him to fill himself well. Peter, Peter from now on, you now have the mission of really filling yourself perfectly, fully. But how can you do this then? Therefore, after that amazing confession of faith that Peter just gave, Look at what Jesus said to him after that. Through that, we can understand that mission that he received. If Peter... If this was Peter's amazing confession of faith, being filled with God's word, with the Holy Spirit, and all things like this, then, from that moment, Peter would have been given, uh, like heaven, just right there. But after this confession, what did Jesus give him? After this amazing confession, it was not given to him, heaven itself, but the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. It's not that he was given heaven itself, but the keys to heaven. Okay, use this, and with this, you can open and close the gates of heaven. To close it means that you, can't, you won't go in by yourself. You did it. If you open it, then you can enter. What does this mean? This means, hey, Peter, right now, inside of you, you have to empty yourself very well. And from that place, remember, God has placed that amazing confession of faith in you. But in the future, you're going to have to fill yourself with the holy things. 
And when you do, and if you do, with the keys that I've just given you, you can open the gates to the kingdom of heaven. You diligently fill yourself with the holy things. But if you don't, Peter, you will be one who closes it too. You can be that kind of person too. But in the end, Peter, after he received the keys to the kingdom of heaven, what did he say? What happened? You have to fill yourself, Peter. Peter, right now, you're, it's not that you gave this amazing confession because you're amazing or you're great. No, because you emptied yourself well, the Father God, uh, you know, put that inside of you. Peter, don't misunderstand. It's not that you're great. Really be careful and work hard in filling yourself with holy things. But after this warning, what did Peter do? He, Peter, after this warning, he ignored it. And in the emptied state of his heart, he did not fill himself with the holy things, the spiritual things, the word of God, not the will of God. But instead, Peter filled his empty heart with his own personal thoughts, his own personal opinions that is still bound to earth. And instead became Satan himself who became an obstacle for Jesus. He was good at emptying himself. That's Peter. But he emptied himself well. Gave this amazing confession of faith. But after this, Jesus wanted to put inside of his him the amazing, uh, you know, he gave an amazing prophecy rega in regards to the cross. Peter, I'm going to die, but on the third day, I'll be raised again. This is for the salvation of humankind. But after this amazing prophecy given by Jesus, Peter said, no, that is not right. And he, instead, he put his own thoughts before Jesus's. And after this, he ended up being someone who denied or pushed back the amazing work of the redemption of the cross of Christ. Matthew chapter 16 verse 22 to 23 if you read it it says and yet Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying God forbid it Lord this shall never happen to you but Jesus turned and said to Peter get behind me Satan you are a stumbling block to me for you are not setting your mind on God's purposes but men's Your empty heart, God's work, God's will, the will of the cross. Lord, uh, Peter, you have to fill your heart with this. But why are you filling yourself with the thoughts of hu the humanly thoughts, worldly thoughts? Peter, you're becoming a, a stumbling block to me, an obstacle. Today, it's the same for you and I. When you look at all of the mistakes and the sins of the past that we've made, we may think that once we completely cleanse ourselves to repentance, it's, it's good, it's enough. But we cannot have that kind of same misunderstanding, uh, just like Peter. See, repentance is not the completion of faith. It's merely the beginning. Your heart is now all emptied, it's all cleaned, and it's all set in order. But look at our scripture reading, our parable of today. See, everything's emptied now. It's a big space, and we see that you put in everything already, you decorate it, you make it look pretty. But there's no substance of faith. And instead... In that original state where you threw away the unclean spirit, the unclean uh, will, uh, the delights, the, the values, the greed of the world, you are supposed to fill yourself with the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Word. And if you don't immediately fill yourself with these things, then a, a, a thought more wicked than before. Like Peter. Like Peter, you may be like Satan, being a stumbling block. Peter, if you think about it, it says that, he, Lord, you can never die. 
it's not something completely opposite, but it was something that was for Jesus, that was infused with his thoughts. But because this was so wrong, and he ended up becoming Satan. Look at Judas Iscariot. Look at him. How did he, how was he someone, you know, uh, he was a disciple who was able to be in charge of money. And he was someone who had this great trust from Jesus. But how did he, in one moment, become someone who was able to betray Jesus like this? In just this one moment, threw him away. The origin for this, all the reason for this, is written. In John, what does it say? It tells us that the devil, or Satan, from that moment on, planted in his thoughts, in his minds, thoughts to sell Jesus. In other words, at that time, inside of Judas Iscariot's heart or his mind, it was emptied. It was emptied. That all this, he, all these three years, he followed Jesus, listening to these countly, countless works, experienced all these miracles and signs of, that Jesus performed, and all this experience, his faith through his word. He was unable to fill himself with these things. But Judas Iscariot was someone who kept his position beside Jesus in an emptied state. And in this emptied state, Satan came in, and in that moment, put inside his thoughts, infiltrated it with thoughts of selling Jesus. <coughs> to sell Jesus away. To sell him, uh, to the, uh, for him to die on the cross. And Judas Iscariot had this wretched end where he uh, committed suicide, hanging himself, fell down, and his gut spilled open. For you and I, what can we attain? What is the conclusion that we can receive? In the end, this emptying and filling must occur together. It must occur together. There must not be space and much time in between these works. They must be right after the other. With If, if, there, if there's space in between, this person increases their chances of stumbling and, uh, and falling away. The emptying of sin through repentance and the work of filling through the Word, through the Holy Spirit, the spiritual filling must occur simultaneously, must occur together. Like this, Satan does not have space, an opportunity for his attacks. This ends up being a defeat for Satan. In our scripture reading in verse 45, it tells us that there were seven more spirits, more wicked than itself, that it brought. Seven is a perfect number. In other words, this is a perfect wickedness. More so than seven actual uh, you know, spirits. Seven is a perfect number. This symbolizes a perfect uh, conquering of Satan. Before this, this unclean spirit was one. And you were fighting it and you had enough power to overwhelm it. And you cast it out. But in that emptied state, you were unable to fill yourself with the holy things. Now with seven spirits, you were, you are now in a state where you are not powerful enough to overwhelm it. Satan has completely and perfectly conquered over you. In the end, Peter, Peter, after emptying himself, was not able to fill himself with the will, the redemptive historical will of the cross. And as a result, when Jesus was uh, captured and arrested by the Roman soldiers, Peter ran far away and even three times denied and cursed Jesus. This was like the most wicked state that we've seen from him. And he fell, he swept to, the, uh, what is it, to that state. Matthew chapter 26, 
for 74 to 75, if you read it, it says, Then Peter began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the statement that Jesus had made. Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. I will follow you till death. To prison I will follow you. Peter was able to, Peter said this to Jesus before. But Jesus, you know, in response to that says, Peter, you will deny me three times before a rooster crows. He was unable to fill his heart, Peter. Peter, if he filled his emptied heart with these words of warnings from Jesus, he would not have denied Jesus. Instead, see that uh, that those warnings were not accepted by Jesus. So the, the, these warnings of Jesus was not accepted by Peter. And Peter did not have these warnings uh, up here during his moments of denial. Now, if he was actually filled with these things before, these things where Jesus said, yes, right now, I, like now there will be a time where I die, but I won't be dead forever. I will be raised to resurrection. And this, was, this will be for the work of the salvation of all humankind. And if Peter really did fill himself with these things, and even if Jesus was captured and arrested, taken all the way, and Peter, and Pe uh, Peter was asked, Hey, aren't you Jesus' disciple? Will you go and die with him? Peter would have said, if he was filled, if he did fill himself, he would be like, Yes, I am his disciple. But look, Jesus is going to die now, but he won't be dead forever. He will be resurrected. He will come back, and he will be raised. If he really filled himself with this kind of redemptive uh, work uh, of the prophecies that he received from Jesus before, then what? But, but Peter failed in his task of failing, yet Jesus did not throw him away. Yet Jesus did not give up on him. After resurrection, Jesus came and found Peter. How did Jesus restore Peter? <laughs> Remember, before we just looked at Peter cursing and denying Jesus three times. And Jesus now asked three questions to him and received three responses of love to restore Peter to what's righteous, to what's true. Jesus is now filling him with these things so that Peter can be reborn, reinstated as a person of faith again. John chapter 21, verse 15. Jesus, who was resurrected, asked Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? He says, yes, Lord. So that's one time filling. In verse 16, John 21, 16, it says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. This was the second line, time. In John chapter 21, verse 17, it says, Do you love me? It says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. So it was the third time where Jesus filled him. In other words, what Jesus did, Jesus brought it out of him. Jesus asked these questions to fill him with the answers that Peter didn't even know. Peter did not fill himself with the holy good things, and he was unable to. So the resurrected Lord came and appeared before Peter and made, made Peter say the correct answers by giving up like a set-up question. And through this, through this, Peter was able to receive the Holy Spirit all the way to his martyrdom to proclaim the word, the gospel of Jesus. I will now give the conclusion for today's message. What can we, and how, and how much, you know, do we empty ourselves? That's important. But what's even more important is, now that we've emptied ourselves, what do we fill ourselves with? The reason why this part is so much more important is 
that an emptied heart does not stay that way. An emptied heart surely results itself in two states. Will you be, will you find yourself in a state of being filled with darkness or being filled with light? With light and life. A person, a human heart, will never stay emptied. It will always be filled with something. Apostle Paul was even able to confess like this. In Romans chapter 7, verse 17, it says, But now, no longer am I the one doing it, but the sin that dwells in me. The moment that you fill yourself with darkness, inside of me there is sin. Even Apostle Paul is confessing this. That this sin has come inside of me, and there are times where it now controls me, dictates and conquers me. But he also confesses in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This time, with life and light he is filled. And in that moment, in that emptied heart, he filled himself with Christ. And then there we see uh, a work of miracles and signs, the power of Christ. Apostle Paul, who was used as the great evangelist of the early church, he even talked about the things, or the things that uh, he talked also about the things that he fills himself with. It either uh, forks into a state of darkness or to the other side, to the state of light and life. It never stays in a state of empty, uh, in, in an emptied state. Before this year is over, it's a month and a half left. Uh, to all the things that you filled yourself with, the greed of the world, saying, wow, that person's doing this. I kind of wish I want to have that thing too. Or I want to also have that and, and experience that too. So all of these things, all the default things, we have to empty ourselves fully. Especially in, the, uh, in this pandemic, maybe we really empty ourselves with the worries and the concerns of the, uh, that we have in our lives. You know, we, no, no matter how much you know, we worry and worry, thinking about something, the problem never goes away. So why do we fill ourselves with worries and concerns? There's no need or time for these things. These things that you are powerless to, don't worry about it. Empty your heart with it, of it. Then, in that emptied state of your heart, don't stay there too long, but immediately work to fill yourself with the word, with the word, uh, with with prayer and with the Holy Spirit, I earnestly request this of you. And like this, Satan will not have space to have to bring seven more wicked spirits because now you have already filled it with your heart to the brim. There is no space for anything to come in. You are filled with the Holy Spirit, so no uh, worries, concerns of the world, no sin, no temptations, no greed of the world can uh, have room to go into your heart. In this principle of emptying and filling, may we be those who are able to fully achieve these two things. And at the same time, to all the things that we are hoping in in our prayers, may we experience it. May we be able to end this year beautifully filled with hope and joy. I sincerely bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, we thank you. You have... In this year of 2020, you've allowed us to live in your grace. And we have filled ourselves with various things. Also, how did we empty ourselves? If we've not emptied ourselves yet with the greed of the world, with envy, hatred, worries and concerns, despair, Lord, at this time, help us to 
fully and perfectly empty ourselves, and now fill ourselves with the holy and pure uh, waters, your word, your Holy Spirit. And like this, as we fill ourselves with the good things, may there be no space, no opportunity uh, for Satan to fill us with other things of the world, the sinful things. May we be filled with the spiritual, the holy things, though we are lacking. Though uh, all around us, uh, there's not much valuable things of our lives. Lord, at this time, through your fiery love, through your, uh, uh, your power of life that we fill ourselves with, may all the things that we have lost, all the things that we have, uh, that have been destroyed, may it be restored and recovered in this year. Lord, all things that we, uh, we dedicated everything to you, we pray this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, with sincerity, amen. Let's give glory to God. Let us all sing hymn number 202. Jesus, child, Lord, get a moon. For your energy, to you, your shield, I'm leading and singing. Jesus, child, Lord, your energy, to Young 매우 귀중한 피로다 눈보다 더 희게 맑히는 것 보혈의 능력 주의 보혈 부정한 모든 것 맑히시니 참 놀라운 능력이로다 주의 보혈 능력이 또다 주의 피 믿어 주의 보혈 그 어린 양의 매우 귀중한 피로다 그 주의 복음을 전할 제목 보혈의 능력 주의 보혈 날마다 나에게 찬송 주니 참 놀라운 능력이로다 주의 보혈 능력이 또다 주의 피 믿어 주의 보혈 그 어린 양의 매우 귀중한 피로다 Let us now pray for the offering. Father God, we thank you so much that on this day, on this holy Lord, uh, morning of this Lord's Day, you've allowed us and our families to gather before you, to, uh, get, uh, inviting us here to meet with you in this worship filled with spirit and in truth. And we thank you so much for this. For all this time, we were unable to empty ourselves with the things, darkness, sins, worries, concerns. Help us to empty ourselves with all of these things. And with the word that we receive now, may we be those who are able to fill ourselves with the spirit of the Lord, filling ourselves, our families, our children through this, during, through this time of worship, through this time of grace. At this time, help us to never fill ourselves or allow ourselves the opportunity for unclean spirits and even more wicked, seven more wicked spirits empty us, have the opportunity to attack us. May we not fill ourselves and our families uh, with the things of the light and life that you provide. May we be these kind of victorious families of faith. We thank you and pray at this time uh, with we would desire to give you these precious offerings to all the hands that give. Lord, may you bless them. And if there are those who are suffering from various uh, issues of life, may you fill them with uh, uh, blessings uh, spiritually and physically. May we 
ne- be those who are never destroyed or, or crumbled, but may we be those who are able to walk the foot- footsteps uh, of victory. We thank you and pray this in the loving name of the Lord Jesus Christ with sincerity. Amen.
Today, our English ministry has given us the precious praise, and I believe that God received much glory. Now it's time for announcements. Uh, the following Lord's Day is uh, November 22nd. That's going to be uh, Thanksgiving Lord's Day. And before we would used to come for, you know, Thanksgiving in church to celebrate, but this is another case this year. Let's uh, uh, really not forget about the grace uh, that God has supplied us with this whole year. So with a heart full of Thanksgiving, we can prepare our hearts like this, prepare our offerings like this. The Thanksgiving offering envelopes are at church. So those who require them, you can come at church, uh, come to church to get them. Um, next, um, you guys all know that because there's not a clear, uh, you know, ending an announcement of who the president is, there's still a lot of dispute, a lot of unrest happening in our nation between people. And so though, you know, so this nation, may we pray for the peace and the security that God can supply our nation with. And you guys all know that our days have got, become a lot colder. So please, I know we have to still be careful for coronavirus, but we also have to care, be careful for just the common cold. And if we lose our health, we lose everything. So please, may you be healthy and to be careful and to end this year strong. Please rise. Let us all sing hymn number six and end our Lord's Day with benediction. Chanyang song du song ja song yong samil che shin ke yong se mugung hagi kachi yong kwang And now many people have given you these offerings of thanksgiving and of tithes, these offerings containing their various prayer requests. These are offerings given with all of their hearts and their minds, so Lord, may you accept them. If there are those who are suffering from the lack of possessions or other things in life, Lord, may you fill them with the spiritual things, with your grace. And now, with the limitless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of our Father God, the inspiration, the fellowship, as well as a filling work of the Holy Spirit be upon all those here today. May we be those who are able to completely uh, empty ourselves with the unclean, the wicked things of the world. And now we may we fill ourselves with the spiritual, the holy waters of your word, of life, of grace, and of peace. May this allow us to cast away all the unclean spirits, the sins of the world. May this blessing be upon us, our families, our business place, our schools, our office place, our church, our na upon our nation and our peoples, from now until eternity. Amen. Our Lord's Day service has ended. I hope that you may have another week of peace. Thank you.